Okay, so here's um, the truth about me. I was never a very good student. I didn't uh, know that I was interested in, in school or education at all until I took my very first anatomy and physiology class. And I thought it was the most amazing thing I'd ever taken. And I've never looked back from it. But I was really intimidated by the size of the words. And then when I went on into more of my specific program classes, my adverse degrees in biology and kinesiology. So when I went into those classes, I, the, the words were overwhelming. And I didn't know how to memorize them all. Until I learned there's this amazing thing called medical terminology and the rules within it, which mean you don't have to learn all the words. You can literally make a combination of any word and break down immeasurable amounts of words into their meanings just by knowing a few word roots, combining forms, suffixes, and prefixes. That's it. These four things will allow you to use your medical language. So when you see a word that looks like it has 18 syllables, don't worry about it. You're going to break it apart into its little components, and from there you can manage anything. Think back to like Sesame Street. If you, if you guys, I might be aging myself right now, but if you guys can remember, it was Cookie Monster, and he would run in with half a word, and then run in with half a word until he brought it together finally in a form that's basically what med term is. The only trick is you've got some new word roots, suffixes, and prefixes to learn. But I have it broken down into I think the most you ever have to learn is next week, and it's about 65. Little tiny suffixes. You can do this. You can do this, and you'll use it forever. So what you got to do is remember that all you're doing is breaking down big words into usable parts. And from here, think about it like a puzzle. I really hope some of you like puzzles as much as I do. But if you think of it as a puzzle or a game, this class can be a lot more fun and a lot less intimidating. So let's go over the general rules first of all. A word root is basically the heart of any word. So in hepatitis, the word root would be or hepat. It means liver. This itis is the suffix. So by using my medical terminology skills, I know this would be inflammation or infection of the liver. So you've just already learned two terms. Hepat means liver. Itis means inflammation or infection. Let's try this next one. The word root is tonsil. Y'all already know where your tonsils are. This suffix is ectomy. Ectomy means to remove or excise. So a tonsil ectomy is to remove or excise the tonsils. What if I did this? If I did that, all I've done was take ectomy from tonsillectomy and move it to hepato, and now it's hepatoectomy. Now that I know this is to excise or remove, it would be removal of the liver. So what if I take the ITIS off the pato and move it to tonsillitis? Now this would be an infection or inflammation of the tonsils. It really is this easy. You break words down. You never look at the entire word or it will overwhelm you. So I'll go ahead and go through this. Oma means cancer or tumor. Gastro means stomach, so cancer or tumor of the stomach. Itis, inflammation or infection. Laryngeo is the area of your voice box, so that'd be infection or um, inflammation of the voice box. Often word roots require combining forms, which basically it's just an O. Sometimes an I, very rarely an I, but mostly an O. See the O here? In mammogram, there's the O. In psychology, in laryngeo spasm, in hepatomegaly, there's the O. Basically, two consonants don't like to touch in when we build med term. So we put the, the nice sweet value in there to kind of intersect them. It's, it's the glue, if you will. So a mammogram, ma'am would be the word root, but since it has a combining form, which is what we'll use for the majority of this class, it's mammo, gram is the suffix. So it would be a recording of the breast. In this one, psycho is the combining form. Ology means a study of, psycho means the mind, study of the mind. Hepato is liver. Megaly means enlarged. So hepatomegaly means enlargement of the liver. So basically, when we connect our word roots to our suffixes, we like to use a combining form. All right, I know you all know what a suffix is. You've been using them since you were in first grade. It's one of the first ways we learned how to read the English we speak. Now you're going to use them the same way, but this time for the Latin and the medical words 
uh, that you're going to be incorporating into your vocabulary. Now, usually in the case for medical terminology, suffixes indicate pathology or a disease, a condition, symptom, or some sort of procedure. And when you go through the suffixes next week in your next lesson, it will be divided that way. Here's some example of suffixes. We already did ectomy, which is removal. So an appendectomy would be removal of the appendix. Ida is inflammation or infection. So this would be inflammation or infection of the appendix and so on and so forth. I'll let you all continue to go through those as you learn. But trust me, by the end of this course, you would be able to look at gastroscope and instead of seeing one large word, you'd be like, oh, scope is instrument to view. Gastro means stomach, instrument to view the stomach. Think of this as breaking apart puzzle style. All right, last part are prefixes. It's something that changes the meaning of the word, starts at the beginning of the word, normally indicates number, time, position, measurement, direction, or uh, the amount. So it just kind of changes what the word means. So let's look at a few. Hyper means um, excessive, where hypo means uh, deficient. So if you have hypertension, tension means stress, and it's basically the stress that blood's putting on the blood vessel. That means excessive tension. If you had hypo, change the suffix, hypotension, that means that it's low or a uh, deficient amount of tension. So the prefix just changes the meaning of that word. If any of these terms seem above your head, that's fine. You have not been asked to learn them yet. In fact, if you go back and you look at your basic, basic element worksheet, then it's going to ask you only what a combining form, word root, suffix, and prefix are, not about all the themselves. I was just using that as an example. Next important things, or the last two things for this entire lesson you need to learn to do, is how to define and then how to build medical words. We've been defining medical words the whole time you've been listening. You do these three steps for every word. First, you define the suffix. Then you go to the first part of the word, whether it's a prefix, word root, or combining form, and then you do the middle. So let's go to this example. Suffix, so to define this, I know itis means inflammation or infection. I know gastro means stomach, so to define gastritis, I'd say it's the inflammation or infection of the stomach. Let's try this one. It's a longer one. If you just saw this word written, this is the way you'd see it written in a book. This might look like a really scary word until you start breaking it apart into its uh, major word elements. First thing you want to do is slash off, and I say slash because I, I use a slash to denote the different parts, the suffix. I recognize itis, inflammation, or infection. Next thing, and it's really the easiest way to do this, is to look at that combining vowel, which I spotted right here, and make another slash, because you just made another word. And then I'm going to denote the vowel as its own combining form. There's your glue. Inflammation, go to the beginning of bone and joints. Osteoarthritis is an inflammation, uh, it's a condition that inflames the bone and joints. So you can do that by just breaking that down. Use that slash when you're doing it on your paper, doing it on the computer. Use that slash because all of a sudden when you break those, that big word into its smaller components, it's a lot easier to handle. All right, last try. Polyneuritis. Y'all, I bet you have ITIS, itis now. Inflammation or in, uh, infection. Go to the front of the word. This happens to be a prefix. Poly means many. So that's an inflammation of many, and neuro is nerves. Polyneuritis means inflammation of many nerves. Use that same technique every time. So when you go through the actual lessons and you're working on your own, you'll have a lot of opportunities to, uh, to do this. And actually, this one skill is what you're going to use 95% of the time throughout this entire semester. All we're going to be doing is presenting new suffixes, new word roots, and, uh, and new prefixes throughout the semester. All right, last skill, building medical words. Now, I do have to warn you, this one is a little more difficult. This is a skill that's going to grow while your um, understanding this semester and throughout your career grows. So breaking down is, a, uh, is an easier task than building. I think that's probably because it requires spelling, and spelling takes a while to get down just because these words are coming from Greek and Latin roots and, and just require a lot of exposure. But to do this, you'll follow these three rules. Rule one, a word root, remember that's the bulk, that's the major part of the word without that vowel, 
links a suffix that begins with a vowel. Here's your example. If a suffix has a vowel, you do not use this combining form vowel. Since arthro has an R, the R can touch the I, they're fine. Remember, two consonants don't like to touch each other. So arthritis doesn't need that vowel. So the opposite of that is a confining form leaks a suffix that begins with a consonant. So look down here on hepatoseal. Seal actually means herniation, herniation or swelling. Hepato means liver, so it's swelling or herniation of the liver. And since site or the suffix site starts with a consonant, you will always put that combining vowel between it and its combining form. So just remember, if it has a consonant, it needs a vowel. If it doesn't, such as I-T-I-S doesn't, it doesn't need a vowel. And if this sounds confusing, and you will have a ton of practice of this, as well as other videos supporting it um, in your lesson. So if it doesn't have a vowel, like itis, no combining form or vowel needed. If it has a consonant, then go ahead and add that combining form in. Last rule, if you are linking together two word roots or combining forms such as gastro which means stomach and intestino which means intestines then you always use that combining o so this would ale means pertaining to the stomach and intestines so that o will link those i'm not going to linger on this because i just told you this is definitely the most difficult part and there's some practice activities that i think will make it clearer but there are three rules to building them, and but most importantly, get down those three rules to defining medical wor uh, medical terms, starting with the suffix always, then going to the front of the word and through. So when you come into your Blackboard course, once you complete the course policy quiz, of course, you will go into lesson one, into your basic essential materials. Start going through your check sheets, which will make sure that you're on the right road uh, for success. And then complete your worksheets. And I'm hoping now while I'm scrolling through this worksheet, things like word root, combining form, suffixes, prefixes, defining medical words, building medical words look familiar. As you can see, everything we just did is basically lesson one if there's anything extra in your book such as specific terms even ones we just went over you are not responsible for them for this for every single lesson you're only responsible for what's on the worksheet